one shall be reviled for their religion by anyone, for faith is the gift of God. Now those words come from the Edict of Torda of 1568. This was an edict promulgated in the Kingdom of Transylvania. And as such, it's a very important document because it was one of the first expressions of religious toleration in Europe. And the film we saw at the opening of today's reflections was one I took at the beginning of a service held in Torda almost exactly four years ago. That was an occasion to celebrate the 450th anniversary of the promulgation of the edict. And it was held in a Catholic church in the town of Torda, which in 1568 was the Unitarian Church in Torda. And that is where the edict was said to have been composed and signed. But I was privileged to be there four year, almost exactly four years ago. It was a very, very cold day, uh, much colder than the sort of weather we're used to here in January, although perhaps not uh, so cold for that part of Transylvania. But I was there four years ago and in that film at the start uh, you can see walking up the aisle the gentleman uh, who devised the Memorial for Religious Freedom which was also unveiled in the grounds of the Catholic Church in Torda uh, that day. But I wanted to think about Transylvania and about the Hungarian Unitarian Church because a very important event is due to take place in Transylvania at the end of this month. Uh, on the 29th of January, the Hungarian Unitarian Church, which is a name given to the whole church in Transylvania and Hungary, it's Hungarian speaking, although most of their members live in what is today Romania. But on the 29th of January, they will be installing a new bishop, uh, the Reverend Istvan Kovács. And I think it's, it's only right for us to think about our brothers and sisters in different countries, particularly this church, which is one which our denomination has had many close contacts with over the decades. Now the Unitarian Church in Transylvania and Hungary uh, dates back to the Reformation. And uh, the first bishop, and like most of the Protestant or Reformed churches in that part of the world, they tend to have bishops. The first bishop was a man called Francis David and he urged his followers to be as wise as serpents and as gentle as doves because this was a time of religious persecution and uh, they needed to be uh, ready to withstand the persecution that went on then and which has gone on uh, many times since right up to the communist era uh, which only ended in what, 1989, 1990. And we might look at some of the experiences of the church under communism uh, in different ways soon. But, but Francis David uh, based those words to be as, as wise as serpents and as gentle as doves on Matthew chapter 10, some verses there, verses uh, 16 uh, to uh, uh, 20, which I'll read now. Read now. It says there, Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. So this idea of being wise as serpents and innocent as, as doves is reflected uh, in the emblem of the, uh, the Hungarian Unitarian Church. And it's an important, uh, important phrase because they have faced so much persecution over the years but at this time of the reformation uh, the king uh, of transylvania king john sigismund uh, he agreed to bring about this edict which gave toleration for all the different religions in that land and as such it stands as a marker for the future we take for granted 
religious toleration, religious equality, but it wasn't something that always existed. But I was pleased to be invited uh, to the installation of the new bishop on the 29th of January. Unfortunately, I think because of COVID and the general situation, it would be very difficult uh, to get there. Uh, but uh, we can all uh, remember in our prayers uh, the new bishop and the church at this important juncture. The new bishop is the Reverend Istvan Kovac, and he came and studied uh, in, in England at the Unitarian College in Manchester uh, when he was minister of St. George's Church in uh, Transylvania. And unlike a lot of the students or the ministers that came over uh, in the 90s, I don't think he came to Ireland at the time. But I worked with him uh, for many years on the International Association for Religious Freedom. And for many years now he's been a senior figure in his church and is now about to be installed as bishop. And this, this installation itself has been delayed uh, because of COVID. But we wish him well and we wish his church well and we know the important work he has to do there. Now, I've written on my blog about uh, the Unitarian Church in Transylvania a number of times. And at the start of lockdown, I also recorded large sections from uh, the Reverend J.J. Taylor's visits to Transylvania in 1868. Now, he visited Transylvania at the time of the 300th anniversary of the Edict of Torda. And I'll put a link uh, to my reading uh, of his account. It's in 13 parts, if you want to listen to it all. Uh, they're all quite short. But he gave an account of his experiences in Transylvania in 1868. And uh, you can see the link below. Uh, but when he was there, he attended the ordination of some new ministers. And he uh, got from one, one of his hosts a translation of the prayer uh, that was used at these services of ordination. So with the new bishop being installed on the 29th of January, I'd like to read one of these prayers now as we join uh, in sending our prayers and our good wishes uh, to the Reverend Istvan Kovac and his church. Let us pray. O Father of lights, from whom cometh down every good gift and every perfect gift, lift up, we earnestly beseech thee, the light of thy countenance on this thy servant, to whose instruction and care thou art committing thy flock. Illuminate his mind, guide his will, rule his actions, that he may rightly adorn the field of duty allotted him, and render such service to thy name that he may himself obtain hereafter the unfading crown which is promised to the victorious in heaven. Amen. We'll close our reflections today with some, a, sh a short piece of the music recorded at the service uh, in Torda in uh, 2018 with some pictures of the church, the first church in Kolosvar, where the bishop will be installed at the end of this month. 